my term as Premier is not about, about demonstrating how different I am from Premier McGuinty because I've been part of, of a government for nine years. I've been proud to be part of that government. But it's 2013 now. We have, you know, we have a certain set of conditions given that we have been through an economic uh, recession. We're climbing out of the economic recession. And now there are things that we need to do that, that build on what has been done before. Of course, that was Kathleen Wynne, the new Ontario Premier. Well, just because we also have a crucial week coming up in Battleground, Ontario, with throne speeches on deck, and to look at that, News Talk 1010 Talk Radio's Jerry Agar is in the house. Jerry, how you doing? Um, there's Premier well. Wynne saying, I'm not McGinty, but I'm kind of like McGinty. Um, what's your advice to the Premier? Does she want to run as fast as she can away from McGinty, or is there a little bit of something she wants to take with her? Well, uh, first of all, it was everything is former Premier Harris's fault, and then it was the recession's fault, and now it's I'm not McGinty. Uh, <laughs> it would be nice if we had some liberals who would take responsibility. And along with that, there's an interesting issue going on in Ontario where we have an investigation into why some power plants were canceled, the construction underway, how many hundreds of millions, could it be a billion dollars, that cost. And Frank Cleese, who's an MPP on the Conservative side, said that he doesn't believe Premier Kathleen Wynne when she said, that. I have nothing to do with that. I didn't even know it was going to happen. And he has asked Sir David to take a lie detector test. That was the big news yesterday. And, and she, of course, she was the deputy chair of the, uh, of the campaign. And, and that's one of the reasons Cleese is saying, uh, hard to believe that you didn't know what was going on there. Um, but do you think she wants to, I mean, speeches from the throne, you know, they can sometimes be feel-good sort of things. Um, do you think she should address that or just uh, deal with that, you know, subsequently when the legislature gets going, that and the orange scandal? Well, I think she has to deal with both of those things, or she'll be pressed by one of the other parties to do so. I mean, it, you know, Sun News has been talking over the course of the last couple of days about uh, the poll, which shows that none of the three leaders uh, are able to get above 25 percent in terms of popularity. And I think that shows that uh, while nobody's coming out a clear winner, anybody could come out a clear winner if you had an election. And so those are two issues, the orange scandal, the moving up the power plants, which are ongoing, which need to be and are being investigated in the case of orange by the RCMP. And I think that uh, there's going to be a limited amount of time where she can pretend those things don't exist. Uh, one of the things that, that struck me just about that poll uh, is that uh, yes, everybody's about the same, and Ontario's, you know, the, the most, the, the biggest number when we did that poll was, uh, you know, I think more Ontarians didn't like any of the choices than the ones they had, but Kathleen Wynne is new. A lot of Ontarians still don't know a lot about her, are getting to know her, and that means her numbers could be more fluid. I would think problem for Tim Hudak, you know, he's got such high disapproval, and he's been through one election. Horvath, she's not bad. She's been through one election. So they're known quantities in Ontario. Win is the new kid. So here's a chance, your speech from the throne. You know, maybe you really got to start, you know, hitting some home runs on some sort of aspirational, I'm not McGinty. That's the way that she might start separating herself from the pack. Well, yes, certainly, I guess, when you put it the way that you did, David, she has the opportunity to be the new kid on the block and to be somebody fresh and new. But let's not forget that she was a minister under several, several different portfolios under McGinty. She was the co-chair of the re-election campaign, as you pointed out. And so she's really not that new. And so far, in only her first week, she has this controversy we've just been discussing. And the very first thing she did upon being sworn in was add 23% to the number of ministers that she has. She added five, I think. And while that first off at first blush at $40,000 per minister doesn't add the hugest amount to the budget, you know what happens? Ministries have any government department has a tendency to want to grow. And so her first signal was, I'm for bloated government. So, so far, she hasn't shown that she's anything fresh, new, and exciting. And you've probably seen the same press release as I have from the progressive conservatives. They start everyone with the McGinty win government, the McGinty win government. I mean, that's the phrase we're going to hear from the opposition. What do you think about that? Oh, well, well, why is it not fair? As I said, she was minister under several portfolios, co-chair of the re-election campaign. Um, for her to try and suggest that um, McGinty was... Here, here's how I would characterize this, David. Look, there's two possibilities here. Either Dalton McGinty was running this province like a dictator, in which case she, in fact, has no leadership experience. The ministries she held were just merely uh, titles. She was a puppet. Or she's not telling the truth about this. You pick which one of those scenarios is more attractive for you. Um, she's also the agriculture minister. Do we expect some big news about the agriculture file in the speech from the throne? 
Well, there could be some big news. I don't imagine what it would be. And I, I think, you know, I've heard from farmers who are pretty cynical about that because the, she's a city girl. I mean, she gave as the reason she could be the agriculture minister that her father spent summers on the farm at one time. That's ridiculous. That the, um, the, to, to farmers, that's got to be laughable. If there's any opportunity for rural Ontario, at least if the premier is also the agriculture minister, then I guess the head of government has the, uh, you know, the, 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 you, you've got their attention, so to speak. Um, let me turn to uh, Tim Hudak for a moment with you, Jerry. Um, and I wonder at some point, do people start to get nervous or uh, anxious that he is the right guy to lead this party into, you know, the election we're all expecting this spring. I mean, his numbers just aren't there. They haven't really even popped around. Uh, what, what are your thoughts about that? Uh, that point is long past, I believe, uh, at least from conservatives that I hear from on a regular basis, because while everybody agrees that Tim Hudak is a good guy, he's a nice guy, I think with these white papers that he's putting together and, and having seen him watching online as he's made some presentations of some of these white papers, I think he's getting a little better on the stump, but um, he's not catching fire. The poll that we just referenced shows he's not catching fire, and I think conservatives are very worried that they don't have the person that can grow have the brass ring. He should have been able to do it last election. Everybody thought it was his to lose, and he lost it. And that kind of goes to the question that Tudak is, and the party is going to be faced with. You know, do they want to force an election this spring? Or if they judge that maybe we need a little more time for Tim, let's wait till the fall or let's wait till next year. Can they afford to wait any longer? Well, everybody's waiting a moment right now. Um, you have to wait for the throne speech. And perhaps when I said it was Hudak's to lose in the last election, it's Kathleen Wynne's to lose right now. She has to put forth a, a speech here that doesn't open the door for the NDP and the Conservatives to say, okay, that's it. there's our opportunity, force an election. She, uh, I, I don't think that those parties actually necessarily really want one right now. And so as long as she comes out and doesn't give them a wide-open gap to drive that truck through, we're probably going to wait a little while before we have an election. All right, so uh, you watch that speech from the throne, and we'll check in with you next week then, Jerry. Appreciate it. Thank you.